Once upon a time, there was a tramp. And this tramp had walked all day through the forest with a little hope of finding shelter. And as he was growing tired and weary, and was about to rest his body beneath the sheltering shade of an oak tree, he glimpsed through an opening in the forest. And there he saw the twinkling lights of a little cottage. And he thought, how nice it would be be able to roast myself before the fire and get a bite to eat. And as he dragged himself wearily toward this cottage, he met an old woman coming toward him. The old woman stopped and looked at him and said, Good evening. Where do you come from? And the tramp looked up at her and said, South of the sun and east of the moon, I have been all over the world except for this parish. Well, said the old woman, you must be a great traveler then. And what may your business be here? Oh, said the tramp, I would merely like a little shelter for the night. Mm -hmm. I thought as much, said the woman, but you may as well get away from here at once. The master of the house is not at home, and my place is not an inn. Well, said the tramp, you mustn't be so hard-hearted, woman. We are both human beings, and we should help one another, shouldn't we? Help? Help, she said. Who'll help me? I haven't had a morsel of food in the house, even for myself. No, you'll have to find shelter someplace else. tramp, however, was persistent. And although the old woman grumbled and complained, she at last gave in to his begging, and she said she would allow him to lie on the floor for the night. Now, when the tramp went into the house, do you know what he noticed? He noticed that the woman wasn't nearly as poor as she had pretended to be. She was only stingy and greedy. And the tramp, in his most agreeable manner, asked her for something to eat. Where am I to get it from, said the woman. I haven't tasted a morsel of food myself the entire day. But the tramp was a clever fellow. Poor old granny, he said. You must be starving. Well, in that case, I suppose I must ask you to have something with me. The old woman looked at him. With you? What have you got to offer, I'd like to know? And the tram said, he who far and wide doth roam sees many things not known at home. Lend me a pot, Granny. Now the old woman became very curious, so she handed him a pot. And she watched him very carefully as he filled it with water, put it on the fire, and then out of his pocket, he took a four-inch nail, turned it three times in his hand, and put it in the pot. The old woman stared incredulously. What's this going to be, she said. And the tramp said, Nail broth. The old woman had never heard the like of that before. And she said, Well, that's something for poor people to know. I should like to learn how to make it. And the tramp said, You only have to watch me. And he went on gently stirring the pot. The old woman squatted on the hearth, her eyes following every movement of his hand. This kind of nail generally makes good broth, said the tramp. But tonight, it is likely to be rather thin. You see, I have been making broth for a whole week with the same nail. And if I only had a handful of oatmeal to put into it, that would make it fine. But since there is none, there's no use wishing for it. And he went on, gently stirring the pot. The old woman looked and said, Well, I may have a scrap of oatmeal somewhere. Let me see. She went and fetched it. She did have oatmeal. And it was both good and fine. 
The tramp put in some of the oatmeal and went on stirring, while the woman still stared. This broth would be good enough for company, said the tramp, <laughs> adding more oatmeal. If only I had a bit of salted beef and some potatoes. Oh, well, there's no use thinking about that. But the old woman suddenly remembered some potatoes she had put away and perhaps a bit of beef as well. She gave them to the tramp and kept on stirring. And she sat and stared as hard as ever. This will be grand enough for the best in the land, he said. Well, I never. I never, said the woman, and just fancy. All with a nail. <laughs> If only I had a little barley and a drop of milk, we could ask the king himself to have some of it. This is what he has every blessed evening, I know, for I have served under the king's cook. Dear me, the king. Well, I never, she exclaimed, slapping her knee. She was quite awestruck by the tramp's fine connection. But there's no use in thinking about what we cannot have, is there? And suddenly the old woman happened to remember, just happened to remember, that she had a little barley and that she wasn't quite out of milk. So she went to fetch the one and then the other. The tramp went on stirring and the woman squatted down again and went on staring. Then all at once, the tramp took out the nail. Now it is ready. And we'll have a real feast. Of course, the king and queen always had a bit of brandy and a sandwich with this kind of soup. And they always used a cloth on the table when they ate. But there's no use thinking of that. By now, the old woman was feeling quite grand and fine. And she thought it would be nice to have it just as the king and queen did for once. So she went straight to the cupboard and brought down the brandy bottle and glasses. She brought butter and cheese, smoked beef and veal. When she had set them out on her best cloth, the table looked as if it were decked out for company. Never in her life had the old woman had such a grand feast. Never had she tasted such broth. And just fancy, it was made with only a nail. She was in such a good humor at learning how to make delicious broth so cheaply that she couldn't make enough of the tramp who had taught her such a useful thing. They ate and drank and drank and ate until they both became tired and sleepy. The tramp started to lie down on the floor. But now that would never do. Such a grand person must have a bed to lie in. The tramp really didn't need much urging. It's just like sweet Christmas time, he said. And I have never met a kinder woman. He lay down on the bed and went fast asleep. When he awoke the next morning, coffee and the glass of brandy were waiting for him. And when he was going, the old woman gave him a bright and shiny coin. And thanks, she said. Many thanks for what you have taught me. I shall live in comfort now that I've learned to make broth with a nail. Well, it isn't very difficult if you only have something good to flavor it with. The old woman stood in the doorway, staring after him admiringly. <laughs> Just think, wasn't I fortunate to meet such a man? Surely such people don't grow on every bush. <laughs> A girl once went to the fair to hire herself a servant. And at last, a funny-looking old gentleman engaged her and took her home to his house. And when she got there, he told her that he had something to teach her, for that in his house, he had his own names for things. He said to her, What will you call me? 
Master or mister, or whatever you please, sir, says she. He said, you must call me master of all masters. And what would you call this? Pointing to his bed. Well, sir, bed or couch, or whatever you please, sir. No, that's my barnacle. And what do you call these? Said he, pointing to his pantaloons. Breeches or trousers or whatever you please, sir. You must call them squibs and crackers. And what would you call her? Pointing to the cat. Cat or kit or whatever you please, sir. No, no, no. You must call her white-faced simony. And this now? Showing the fire. What would you call this? Fire or flame or whatever you please, sir. You must call it hot cocolorum. And what's this? He went on, pointing to the water. Water or wet or whatever you please, sir. No! Pondalorum is its name. And what do you call all this? Asked he as he pointed to the house. House or cottage or whatever you please, sir. You must call it High Topper Mountain? That very night, the servant woke her master up in a fright and said, Master of all masters, get out of your barnacle and put on your squibs and crackers, for white-faced simony has got a spark of hot cocolorum on its tail, and unless you get some pondalorum high top a mountain, will be all on hot cocolorum. Which is even worse than Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. <laughs> <laughs>